Ooh, what is up guys, I'm of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your of course, the Scarender. And today we're going up against, of course, the Rude Leaf Storm in a Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle. Clearly, I had to say that. Now, looking to my opponent's team here, we have Gumchu as a great. Uh, Toxapeg, Tapu Bulu, very, very great combo. Um, Palo Sand, Meanwhile, and of course, Raichu. So a very, very good team in my regard, a bit of a great variety to get it with Tabulu and Toxic which is a really, really dangerous combo. I myself is using a Scarf um, Incineroar, Flying on with Dragon Dance, Ninetales, Sandslash, Electavar, and Klefki. And my main idea going into this game really wasn't that broad. I knew that Sandslash could you know, dent his team really well, but also I am facing off against opponents here which can take the damage. So I really just needed to get this heal up, but I also needed to find a way to kind of stack a few spikes just to get some kind of residual damage going. Now, I'm not going to lead off with Sandslash or Nine Tails for that matter because he could outmaneuver them and really I don't want to take my chances versus Raichu. So Incineroar was my go-to lead here in this kind of environment. And it should be noted, uh, Nine Tails is supposed to have Life Orb, but it doesn't have this very Wi-Fi battle, which... It's both good and bad because I do miss out on a few residual damage, but also I'm missing out on a few damage outputs which could be important or not. So with all of this said really, let's see what the Darude went for versus me. So right, so from the get go here, my opponent is going to start with the Gumchu. So I was really thinking is, alright, I could U-turn. I mean, I really don't have any other reason to do anything else. Klefki should be able to take this on fairly well. Actually, a lot of my Pokémon should be able to take this on fairly well, so I wasn't too scared about Gumchu, even though, you know, it has its thing going. But Klefki can definitely come in, and I was basically thinking, alright, let's set up Spikes. Well, he U-turns too. And while, you know, this is, a, I believe, a 4 times resisted hit, or at least 2 times, uh, no, that's 4 times resisted, it still does something. So he's gonna bring Concrete here, the, the Palo Sand, and I really can't risk this. I'm, I mean, I'm probably surviving that power, but hell, do I really want to try to take one? Klefki is kind of viable against the type of bullet. So I'm going to bring Mirage as uh, he toxic me. So that's a really, really good prediction of my opponent's side. Well, he had no reason not doing it either because yeah, it was in such a good spot anyway. And I'm going to optimize here for, of course, uh, going for Dragon Dance. Didn't necessarily think about, you know, the grassy terrain. Kind of reduces my damage output. Kind of do that. And um, I really don't have... Fire Punch due to that being a tutor move, which leaves me kind of vulnerable here because I have superpower Dragon Claw, Earthquake, and Dragon Dance, which means resisted, resisted immune against this guy, which pretty much means I'm screwed here. I can't do anything, so as long as Bolo is around, my flying on is, well, worthless to this battle. So I'm gonna bring Klefki here as he goes for a superpower, and sadly, he will crit me. Ouch. Now, here's the thing. I probably would have been pushed down really low, but definitely wouldn't have died. So that is super, super unfortunate that we don't get him paralyzed nor getting a layer of spikes up. And one thing I get though is, uh, of course, this up, the hail. And seeing that, of course, Toxic Pack might be his go to switch in, uh, I decided to go for free strike. And this is probably what does bother me here is that due to, well, well, I do get the freeze, which definitely doesn't matter due to him having skull. Uh, what is annoying is that due to me missing out on Life Orb, it is no longer a 2-hit KO with, of course, Freeze Dry. That really sucks. It definitely did bother me at the time being, but at the same time, I do the damage, right? I still had the opportunity to force him down, and uh, he's, of course, gonna go for Skull here getting out, and uh, what do you know? Burn. So had I had Life Orb, not only... <laughs> <laughs> would have not gotten burned here, I would have knocked out the Toxapec. So that sucks, because that means that Toxapec is still around. I don't like you at all, at all actually. I, I'm pretty much, I'm very discouraged by a Toxapec. So right, seeing that it's very likely it's trying to save this one, I'm definitely going to go for Moonblast over, of course, the, um, the Freeze Try, thinking that, you know, he probably brings such, of course, like Marowak. So sadly, that doesn't happen. Moonblast us up. But ton of damage, but Blizzard definitely would have done more, not killing him, so it doesn't necessarily matter. And uh, at this point, I kind of need to switch out. I don't want to take any risk on this, because my hail is going to disappear. Uh, no, it's not going to disappear, his grass is going to disappear, but 
I think I switched out just just in case because I really want to be able to keep on setting up with of course Alien Mind. So I'll bring Milonir and since we go for a Psychic, we take this pretty darn okay. But here's the thing, I mean, Felistan is his number one switch in more often than not. My Electavar isn't really good for this battle either due to, well, it, it's supposed to all the things he doesn't bring, which is Tapu Koko and of course uh, Zuxi Tree. So not having any of them here makes the game kind of tough for me to do well. And um, I, my Fire Punch clearly doesn't do anything. Uh, I'm gonna try to, of course, try to preserve the Electivar. Going back to Mirage, um, as I clearly know that I probably shouldn't set up any more Dragon Dances because it just might not help me. Um, so here I am in a sweet spot, really, because I could double up. I think, and he probably think that I could, of course, optimize for a double switch. And I should say this, I'm, I'm pretty sure I should have U-turn from here out, just giving up on Dragon Dance completely. I do decide to eventually go for, of course, Earthquake, thinking that he would probably see me doing a double for Ninetales. He didn't do that call, he had no reason to. And uh, as you guys can see, the Earthquake will not only do 50% of the damage, the Grassy Terrain pretty much ensures that he gets back on track, and I'm basically here like, What are you? And why are you here? You're ruining my Flygon! And so I'm going to cycle for Dragon Dance, I really don't know why, really, I think it didn't necessarily matter if I went for an Earthquake since it got so much damage back anyway. So I think I'd point for Dragon Dance in case I survived a possible Stone Edge or Super Power. I do not do that. It kills me. My Flygon dies. Uh, but at least I can set up, of course, um, <laughs> Hail again, which is nice. But as I said it before, I kind of I kind of need a life orb. I mean, I really need a damage output somewhere here, but that's not gonna happen. It's still a 6 0, and I'm feeling like I'm not going to win. There is no way in hell it's gonna win as I optimize for Blizzard for some reason over Freeze Dry. And while it does damage, and I mean, with that damage in mind, of course, the um, Freeze Dry from this range will kill him. Um, I was basically done. I should definitely predict it here. I kind of. Question myself at this moment, you know, can why did I didn't I go for a possible moonblast at this point? Because there was no way it was gonna stay in right. Uh, I do go for freeze right here, thinking that he probably thought that you know he probably was gonna survive. Well, he switches out. I go for freeze right. His me while comes in, and I'm basically here like he he just he's in my head. He <laughs> he makes the calls. Now here's the thing, there is no way a poison jab can kill me, unless it is a C move, that is. So I will optimize for staying in there, trying to take this poison jab, as uh, I will take this. But I don't take it as well as I hoped for, as Moonblast will KO the Meanwhile. So, you know, that's good. Meanwhile, clearly a threat for us. But now I really, I really need Celeste here to kind of optimize itself for doing a lot better than she did, because... Unless I don't have Nine Tails, I will not be able to take out um, the Tapu Bolo or the um, oh, what do you call it, uh, or or the Toxic Pack at this point. So I'm going to optimize to saving him. Going back to Millionaire, I really hope it went for a Volt Switch. He goes for a Focus Blast, so no, damn it, it's just gonna hurt. And while I'm, I'm I should probably have been in range of surviving it if it wasn't for my own hail, but now I'm kind of screwed. And uh, I'm going to fall if he connects the last Focus Blast, which of course you do. And Electivar is going to fall. So, sorry, Millionaire. I'm <laughs> really sorry, buddy. You did well. Took out three hits. That's great. Uh, so, anyway, I'm going to go to Gestalt. I was not considering him being Scarfed. While I am Scarfed on my own, I shouldn't have been able to outspeed him. Well, just no. That did not happen. And that's super effective. Why well, would you take it? Mainly because it's kind of bulky. And my U-turn will finish him off. I'm, I'm still kind of screwed here. I mean, shit, I have three Pokemons left. None of them could be an, even considered healthy. Uh, so I'm just going to set up uh, the um, Hail yet again and then die to the burn. Because I really don't have any other more options. Now it's time for Sand Slash of just, I don't know, do the series of do something, please. Is pretty much the runabout for this. Because I have no idea how to win from here on out. So he's going to bring in Scarlet, that's alright. Um, as long as um, the grass is raining is up, I should be fine. As I'm gonna take this opportunity to go for a sword stance because I need to start killing things and kill things fast. Uh, because I only have four turns of glory. As he goes for a skull, I'm thinking, don't burn me, don't burn me, don't burn me, don't burn me. He's not burning me! 
I'm awesome like that, as um, now his only way of winning would be to try to stall out the hail, which kind of... Emil... I can speak. Um, what I'm trying to say is that he, he does that. He does the trick that just about right, because he gets the grassy surge up, which means one thing, and really one thing only, that the Toxapec is now invincible. Uh, it's now indestructible, I can't touch it, the life for damage is going to kill me in the long run here. And as long as Hale is up, um, this type of bullet can't kill me. Granted, I should say, that my Hale is running out, and by of course surviving an extra turn here, my opponent can simply just um, stall it out and to wait till a better day, because I am not able to KO anything on this range. While I could optimize the go for another sword stance, once the hail is done, so am I. And uh, it's simply as that. My opponent does play the defensive game just right here. He does every optimal play to ensure that he doesn't lose. And uh, with that in mind, I'm gonna give the relief story, you know, just all the credit here because it, it all boils down to that he actually just defensively outmaneuvered my offensive. While it sucks that, of course, my Klefki got credited with superpower, it might not have mattered so much considering the way I was playing. Also, me missing out on Life Orb on Nine Tails, for, for some reason, actually, I'm not, not sure why I didn't have that. Um, but anyway, I was like, night itemless going into this game. But me missing out on that, while it does suck, um, and I do get a lot of still damage uh, due to burn on my Nine Tails, it still kind of sucks that I wasn't able to have Life Orb because I think. I would have played this game a much, much better with, of course, Toxipec not being as offensive of a threat as it was due to actually surviving Ninetales freeze try. You know, that's my issue. I should have played a much, much smarter game. I should have checked my items, for God's sake. But when it, but it all boils down to this, my opponent here, the Relief Storm, does play a pretty much close, a perfect game. And while it sucks that I lose, I'll lose an opponent who actually did a very, very good game, and he deserves this victory, if anything. So, alright, you know, to the afterthoughts, I'm really gonna, you know, say that as it is, and say that... Well, I mean, what could I have done? The type of blue combo to get it with Toxapec is a very, very dangerous combo. And if you don't play that, play around that right, you're going to lose. And I just didn't have that in me. While, of course, you know, my <laughs> Incineroar did have Earthquake, Due to Tapabulo being around still at that point, there was just no way I was gonna win. So the Toxic Pack, definitely the MVP here, surviving and existing just long enough to ensure that I was not able to sweep. It stood tall as a defensive tower against me. So to the relief storm, thank you so much for this battle. I had a blast here. Even though I do lose, I still think that I got a lot of uh, my maneuverability and showcase out here. And while, like I said, it sucks that I don't have the life for my nine tails in the end. It was an exciting game, and for what it's worth, that is definitely what it's all about. So thank you so much for this game, and for everybody who's been watching, make sure to of course, answer, of course, the question of the day. Is Toxipec overrated? And with that said, guys, I'll see you in the next video. So take care until then. Bye.